my Coco Daisy friends. Today we are going to put together a sticker folder. It's a trifold, and so I have some die cuts and I have some things from the Coco Daisy Denim and Blush collection and also some just little pieces of packaging and whatnot that I know I'm going to want to use. So I'm going to start off. I have a 12 by 18 sheet of paper that I have printed myself. So it has a white margin around the edges. I can't use the whole sheet. So I tried this. Uh, the pattern was going the wrong way when I printed the first piece. So I used it as a sample test page and I went ahead and scored it and punched the holes in it. You'll see as I get into this video, I forget to punch the holes in it. So I'll just use this folder as a tuck in because by the time I remember to punch the page holes, I had gotten past the point where I could. So, um, so there's my, uh, template. And I was just checking to make sure that everything folded well and that it didn't get in the holes. And it didn't, so it's a good size. But, um, like I said, forgot to do that. So this is my inspiration piece. I did this one in December. And um, so I am pretty much just going to do a repeat of that one. So I've got it sitting on my desk as a reference. So I know what to put where. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get out my trimmer and trim off the white edges from the um, right and left sides. I can't cut the white edges off of all four sides because my trimmer will not cut 18 inch paper. I think 13 inches is the throat that there is on my cutter. So I do the two sides and then I'm going to go ahead and score it and fold it and then I will trim the bottom and top. So that was just a Fisker's uh, roller trimmer and so now I'm going to get out a tool called the Works by We Are Memory Keeper. We Are Memory Keepers. And um, it has a scoring board at the bottom. It will also do trimming and it does several other things. So it's kind of a handy little thing. Um, so I'm just measuring, measure twice, cut or score once. And so I am putting this up. I am making mine A5. And so I am going to uh, score it at the six inch mark. So I'm making the first score at six inches and I'll make the second score at an additional six inches. So I will just go ahead and fold that over, just checking it out, make sure it looks right. Set it on the six inch mark again and score it again. And then I will fold that piece to the inside and that's how my folder is going to set up right there and then at this point I can trim it off. Um, I could trim it with the we, are, uh, the we Are Memory Keepers works tool but my rotary trimmer is a much better trimmer and so essentially you're cutting through three layers of cardstock so I like to have my best trimmer for that sort of thing. So now I am going to um, trim it at eight and a half inches. I have to check and measure my old folder to see exactly what uh, height I did that one. And it is at eight and a half. I do the, this folder at six inches by eight and a half. So um, I have a little leftover piece that I can use for other things. And now this is my prototype and my actual folder. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Coco Daisy notepad and other items that I am going to use on the left hand panel. I'm going to work this folder from left to right. So I've got a pocket card, which I just think is so cute that says you are powerful, you are beautiful, you are brilliant, you are brave. And I have the notepad. As you can see, they're not going to fit, so I'm going to have to trim them. I'll have a shaker uh, piece right there, and then I will have a uh, tag in a vellum pocket in the bottom left hand corner. So I have two different kinds of vellum. I have Glamour and UV Ultra. I decided to go with the Glamour which is the uh, more transparent vellum just like that better. Uh, so there I have all of my stuff and so now I'm going to start trimming. I really kind of eyeball this and um, I think I cut a quarter inch off the top and the bottom of the, um, well, it looks like more than a quarter of an inch. I think I just trim it as tight as I can. Um, I don't know that I measure. It does look like I do that. I think I do a quarter inch on both sides and maybe three eighths of an inch top and bottom. Not sure. I may have just eyeballed that. Uh, 
so that my pocket card is as small as possible so that I get as much notepad as I can. So, um, so that's going to go up in the right hand corner of this panel. It's hard for me to see the fold and so I have to keep bending the paper up so that I can see I can see the fold better in the video than I can in the um, when I was actually doing it. So I have these little um, corner photo corners and so um, I decided to use those and I just had those in my stash so um, I had to go pull out all the little I have some white they're kind of felty um, one so I'm gonna put those in the corner of that and so I just am just futzing with it here just getting that all set up and then I've got my um, just leftover cocoa daisy packaging that I'm gonna use for the um, shaker pocket and here I have all of the different sequins that I thought might work. These are diamond dots. I couldn't remember what the name of them are. There's like, they, you make a little picture with them. I don't know, I don't do diamond dots. I just bought them to put in my shaker. And um, that's some Recollections glitter. And then this is some leftover Coco Daisy glitter with a little E sticker stuck on it. Um, that Coco Daisy glitter is from October of 2019. And then this final group of sequins, I'm only going to use the peach colored ones that are in that one. Um, and so it has a lot of different colors, but I only want the ones that are peach. So I'm just going to meticulously sit here and pick out um, uh, sequins. And so I'm going to speed this up. Okay, so I sit here and I pick out all of the peach colored sequins here and um, that is meticulous. I do find I put some um, glitter in there and then I put some of these diamond dots in there and um, then the peach color diamond dots and then I decide that I think the light blue will help offset that dark blue. It will not. I don't like the way that looks. It looks like the top of an everything bagel to me. So I start over with the whole mixing and I take out the blues and I just do peach color sequins. Um, after I was putting things away, I found a couple of periwinkle. I found a periwinkle thing of diamond dots. That would have looked great. But I also found the pick me up tool, which helps tremendously if you were picking up just the sequins. And I left this um, in the video. Uh, I pour this. I go ahead and I pour it in the packaging. I left this in here so that you can learn by my mistake. So you can see in that bowl how staticky this stuff is. It's all sticking to the bowl. It's all sticking to the Coco Daisy packaging. It's just a flat out mess. Um, you can't see it yet because I'm off screen, but look, see, it's just like a mess and you can't get it to move around in there. It's not, it's not shaking. And so, um, like me, I have another piece of Coco Daisy packaging. And so, um, I go ahead and I have this little bag. It's like a little anti-static bag. Um, I cannot remember where I got it, but um, I just shove it down inside the Coco Daisy packaging and that helps tremendously. Um, it looks a little powdery when you first put it in there, but you can't see it once you get the stuff in it. So there you can see the little powdery stuff. So um, yeah, if you do this and you have that same situation, you need a little anti-static bag for your shaker. So I went ahead and cut off the edge of that Coco Daisy packaging and now I'm just going to pour it into another little bit of Coco Daisy packaging. So there you go. That's your public service announcement on, um, I think it was mostly that recollection sequence that had the most static in it. Um, you can see it, it all got left in the packaging and yeah. So now when you see it, see now it just, it shakes and it's not sticking to the edge of the packets. So um, now I'm going to put some of the Coco Daisy glitter in there from October of 2019, which looks like fairy dust to me. And um, that little bag of glitter just keeps on giving. I use it and I use it and I use it and there's always some more. So um, now my uh, shaker is just shaking very nicely. So, um, I honestly think the reason that um, crafting takes so much time, I'm sure you do this too. I'm sure I'm not the only person that does this. I put the things on the page 
and then I do something and I take them off the page and then I put them on the page again and then I take them off the page. So um, that's what I'm doing now. Now that I've got one more section of it, now I'm going to sit it out and look at it. And so now I've got the Coco Daisy um, packaging closed up and then I pulled off a few notepads because I'm not going to use the whole notepad, just a few of them to put, to tuck in there. And um, I just need to see where I need to trim those off. And so I'm not going to make them exactly the same width. I just need them trimmed off on the length so that, um, and I just mark them with a pencil. And once again, I'm going to pull out my good rotary trimmer for this because now I've got four or five, I don't know, probably seven sheets of notepad paper. It's pretty thick. Um, but that cuts right through all of them at the same time. So now I can put my um, my notepad there and I have plenty of room. So now I have these little glassine bags. I have a whole package of them. And so um, that's what I had used on the December one. I had used one of these little glassine bags. And I thought about putting, I wanted to use a doily this month. I really wanted to use a doily this month. And I kept trying to use it in different places, and it just really didn't, it never fit. I tried, and I tried, and I tried, but it wasn't, it wasn't to be, so I didn't use a doily. So now I'm going to come back over here to my scoring board, and um, I'm going to put my notepad on it. I think I'm a little off screen, so sorry about that. But I just put the notepad on it, and I kind of mark where I'm going to score that piece of vellum, and... So I went ahead and folded it, and now I think I'm getting up here where you can actually see it. And then on the other side. So I gave it a little bit of clearance so that it could get around the notepad. Um, I didn't score it right up against the notepad. And so now I'm just checking to make sure that the notepad will fit, slip in and out of there um, as I want to use it because I don't want to um, you know, get it in there and it'd be so hard to get out. So now I'm just cutting off a little piece of it so that um, you know, I don't need I don't need the whole, you know, it just needs to go up a little bit on the bottom of the notepad. So I don't know if that made sense at all. So now I'm scoring the bottom of it because that piece will fold around as well. And then um, just to cut down the bulk, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the corners of this um, piece of vellum so that when you fold it over and tape it, there's not that bulky corner bit there. So it's super simple to do because you can totally see the fold lines on vellum. And um, so now my pocket for my notepad is structurally complete. Um, I want to go back and I have a punch this month. I'm using the same punch for just about everything in my planner. And so um, I want to, last month I did a circle or December, I did a little circle pull thing. This month I'm going to do the scallops because that's what I'm doing in my planner. And so I like to get it as centered as possible and, um, and then punch the center first and then go punch the two sides so that then it will be more or less centered on the pocket. And so now I'm going to do the other side and then this will complete that little pocket. Now you could do a pocket like that anywhere. You could attach it to, um, you know, a piece of Coco Daisy paper or, and then just clip it into your binder if you wanted to. So there's my little um, pocket for my notepad. And so now I'm going to, I thought about putting the glitter dots there, um, but there just really wasn't enough room width-wise for that. So I'm going to go back to putting them on the right-hand panel, which is where I was going to put them initially. I thought about cutting off one row of them, but I didn't want to lose one of the colors. So I'm just going to use this glassine bag and put a tag in it. And Excuse me, I had to yawn. So in December when I did this, um, I took the glassine bag and I took washi tape and I rolled it up on the bottom and I ran, I found a pattern that I liked and I ran the whole thing through my printer so that the pattern just printed on the, in a, a rectangle that was bigger than the glassine bag. And so it just printed on the glassine bag and that worked really well. But I just, since what I'm putting in there this time, I didn't feel like it needed a pattern on top of it. So I'm just going to measure the glassine bag and I'm going to trim down this four by six pocket card um, so that you get that pretty floral showing through the uh, glassine bag. 
So, um, so I'm just going to trim that to fit in the glassine bag. And then another um, uh, function of the works tool, sorry, there's my back, is that it has this little um, insert thing that you sit on the trimmer to make tags. And so I'm going to use that. So the first thing I'm going to do on this works tool, it also has a hole punch for the tag. And so I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to confirm that that's what it does, that it punches a hole. And so you can easily center something. It, it has measuring marks on both the right and the left. And so I'm going to punch a little hole in my tag. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this little inset piece to make tags. And it explains to you on the back of it exactly how to make a tag. And so um, this is just a quick and easy way to make a tag. And so I really like this tool for all of its little multifunction type things. So there I have a little tag that I've made um, to go in the glassine bag. And so now I have all of the things that I'm going to fit. I'm going to try to use that little Oh, you know what? I did end up putting a, um, I did not even remember that I ended up putting a doily. I didn't. Y'all have lost my mind. Um, yeah, see, I tried. I tried really hard to use a doily. I was like, did I end up using a doily? No, no, I did not. I came up with something that was cuter. Um, use trash. That's my advice for today. Just use trash. So that's the little leftover piece from the bottom of the notepad. And, um, and I need to trim it off. This is yet another trimmer. And I said, heck with that. I can't trim this little tiny piece. So I went and got a straight edge and an X-Acto knife. And so that helps tremendously. So now I'm going to punch it and, um, so that it gets that cute little scallop on it. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attach it to the top of the glassine bag so that it makes a little scallop at the top of the glassine bag. So um, that was a super easy fix. And I'm just gonna attach that here. And I think it worked better than the uh, doily did anyway. So yeah, so use up your little trashy pieces. And I could have wrapped that around, but I decided not to because I thought it might stick out a little bit on the side. So I just went ahead and trimmed that off. So there we go. We've got uh, everything except for the top of the glassine bag. And so um, for the December one, I put reindeer food, put a little label that said reindeer food. And um, for this one, I'm going to take this pocket card that says do all things with love. And I'm just going to trim it so that it will fit on the glassine bag. And um, so I'm just measuring that to make sure that I'm not cutting off any of the words when I um, trim it to fit on there. And so, yeah, this is yet another trimmer. So I have these three and I use all three of them just depending on what I wanna do. And so then I realize that I need to score it in the middle. So I scored it off screen so it's ready to go over the top of the shaker bag and I taped that shaker bag with um, just regular uh, scotch tape just to make sure that nothing came out and so I'm using my little Heidi Swap mini stapler to staple both sides of the label for that little shaker card. And that's like a super simple way to make a little shaker that you can add into your planner anywhere. Um, so I'm just gonna add it to my shaker pocket. It really has no functional use, it's just there to be pretty. Um, and so, which I'm okay with. I'm okay with things being functional and I'm okay with um, you know things being pretty. And they don't have to do both. Sometimes they'll only do one. Uh, it's much better if it's functional, but it, I need it to be functional and pretty. So I have a different kind of, um, I'm using score tape on this vellum pocket. Um, score tape sticks really, really well. 
The only size that I have is eighth of an inch. If I had a wider one, I'd probably use it here, but eighth of an inch is what I have, and it seems to hold pockets really well. So um, I like to use that better than my tape runner because the tape runner sticks fine if you're putting down just a piece of paper, but if you're putting a pocket down, score tape just works better. So uh, I'm making sure that that's stuck down. And so now I'm going to take off the backing piece of that and um, having a little issue here getting it off. There we go. And so um, I don't do process videos very often, so this is new and different for me. Um, it's very difficult for me to do a whole process video and talk while I'm doing it, so I have to voice over after the fact. And it's literally been two weeks since I did this project. So it take it sometimes I don't exactly remember exactly how it went. So bear with me. Um, you know, I'm I'm trying to do more process videos, but I don't do them that often, so I have to get used to it. I struggled throughout this project with this glue tape runner, and it's not because it's not good, because it is. Um the issue with it is that it was almost out of the tape runner. So um, the whole time I'm doing this, I'm thinking, was this thing always this bad? So now I'm going back to the one in December and looking at it, just trying to remember how I attached the shaker pocket. Um, I went ahead and put that piece of scotch tape right in the back. You'll never see it um, once you get it done because it's clear. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a few pieces of score tape on the back of the shaker pocket to attach it. Um, just because I know that I'll get it down and keep it down. It won't, you know, it won't fall off. And um, so that's about to get this left hand. Uh, section of the trifold done and at one point if you see in the middle there's a little snaggy spot oh I think my exacto is over it right now I accidentally hit the score tape on it and pulled up a little bit of the paper um, so I am using glue to attach the photo corners um, I would not recommend this glue that I'm this clear tack. I do not like this clear tacky glue. I just got it recently and I thought it would be awesome. And it it makes paper uh warp, I guess, for lack of a better term. It's probably fine for these um little photo corners, but I tried to glue some vellum with it and like uh, making a different project and it just it it totally messed up the paper. So um, I'm going to stick with Aileen's Turbo Tacky Glue. That's my favorite. I got a little bit of extra glue there, so I'm just trying to mop it up a little bit. Um, and so now I'm just going to take the X-Acto knife and my fingers and kind of get these little photo corners square before the glue starts to dry so that they can... Now that is the point where now I'm at the point where I cannot punch the holes because those little photo corners are right where the holes would be punched. And I didn't think about it when I was doing this. So if you're gonna do this, you wanna leave a bigger margin than that for your holes right there. So um, for the middle section, I'm going to make one large pocket and the um, memory keeping paper is six by eight and a half, which is exactly the size of my um, my panel there that I'm going to make the pocket out of. So I'm just considering which papers I want to use for the center pocket. Um, Coco Daisy has so many gorgeous different papers or I could have used a dashboard. So I was looking at all of my options. I opted for this one with lots of hearts on it. It's got that same peachy hue as my background paper. And so I'm just going to trim it off. I don't need it to be the full height and so I don't even think I measured that I just think I took a little bit off the top um, because you just need a bit where the um, stickers will be sticking out of the top of it so I'm going to ha go ahead and um, stick with my same system of using this um, scalloped edge on everything that I do and so that way even though things are different colors and different you know it kind of gives it a thematic look about the whole thing. It um, 
And for me, I like to keep in a tight range of uh, colors and I like a tight set of themes in a project because I'm kind of a soldiers in a row kind of girl. So um, I'd like to be looser, but you know, I am who I am. So this is one of those things. This happens to me more often than I'd like to admit. I pick a piece of paper, pick that paper right there, the hearts, and I'm like, oh, and then when I get ready to tape the back of it, I'm like, oh, I think I might like the back better than the front. So that's what happened here. Um, I kind of had an idea of what I was going to do here. So I'm just kind of sitting it together. And so I decided to use the back of the paper instead of the front of the paper. So um, that's perfectly fine. And, you know, both either side would have worked just well, just as well. But um, I liked those little random dots in a lighter color. So that's where we're going with this. So once again, I'm just using score tape. I really like this eighth of an inch score tape when you're making a pocket like this because it doesn't intrude on your pocket a lot. It's not taking up a lot of the, especially left to right. Um, and so your stickers will definitely fit in there, your bigger stickers. Um, I use this, I use this folder for alphabet stickers. So sometimes I have bigger alphabet stickers and sometimes I have smaller alphabet stickers. So um, I kind of use it for both of them. And I kind of do it just because I like, see, I like doing this. I, I looked at these on Pinterest for so long before I actually did them. So I'm just putting some sample stickers in here. Um, just so you can see how they how it looks in there um, and so now I'm gonna go back and do the decoration for this pocket and so I have this die cut or uh, not yeah die that I'm going to use um, and I'm going to uh, use my Sizzix machine to cut it out of paper and so now I'm just looking trying to figure out which paper I want to use. I even look at that little leftover piece of paper. Um, oh yeah, and I decide that that's how I want to do it. And so I am brand spanking new to this whole system right here, but I love this little machine. Um, and so I have my little heart, my Sizzix machine, and so I'm going to get it out. And um, I had never done this before, but you have to poke out all these little holes. So I'm going to fast forward through this. So I made quite a mess on my desk with those little little holes. So um, there are still some in the die itself, but I'll deal with that later. And so I try to get most of the little bits of dots off my desk. Otherwise, there, it's just gritty and just sensory wise. That's just too much for me to be. It's like playing in dirt kind of thing if all that gritty stuff is on my desk. So so now I'm just looking at my elements here and spacing them out, seeing how I like them, what I want to do with them, um, and looking through my papers and seeing what papers I like. And so um, Coco Daisy has such a gorgeous array of papers that it's really nice. So I decide that because there are some blue elements in the left hand panel that I decided to pull that light blue floral paper to um, introduce a few elements of blue in the center panel as well. So um, <clears throat> I am going to punch this again with my punch and so I'm going to center that page and go ahead and punch it all the way across. It's such a cute sweet scallop with the little holes in it. And it kind of has the same look about it as the um, heart with the lock. And I'm going to add that scallop on the bottom of this piece of paper as well. So I just need to get it on there and look at it. And um, then I'm just going to mark the spot where I want to punch the bottom. So once I get this marked, I am going to go ahead and trim it and then punch it on the bottom. And I've speeded this way up 
don't we all wish that we could work this fast when we craft? Um, and so, uh, especially things like this punching, because I have to get it all lined up, and I feel like sometimes I'm moving so slowly with stuff like this. But in video world, you can speed yourself up and look like you're really fast and good at this. And so um, now that I've got my uh, blue additional banner at the bottom with to go on top of my lovely, I decide that I want the heart to be in that blue floral paper as well. So I'm going to use my Sizzix and um, I'm just going to send it through and cut this thing out. Can I just say again, love this machine. It's so nice. Um, and I love using my silhouette as well, but this is just so fast. And if you decide to do it, you don't have to go get a file, figure out how, or draw a file or figure out what you're going to do. So it took me a little bit to get to this point, but I'm really liking how that center pocket is coming together. So now I'm going to adhere all of my pieces now that I know exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and um, get that double scalloped blue floral down piece down first. And then my little extra piece. And that little extra piece right there is just the top piece that I um, pulled off of the um, when I trimmed the top of the pocket, the piece of paper. Now I'm going to use E6000 glue to attach this little plastic piece. Someone recommended that to me. And whenever there's been a plastic piece in the Coco Daisy kit, I have used this E6000 glue and never had a problem with it coming up. Um, my glue is a little bit older at this point, so it got a little stringy, but I was able to get all of those strings out with my X-Acto blade, and it was perfectly fine. Once I, once I got it down, um, it didn't leave any strings anywhere. And so, yeah, I mean, it goes down and it's not coming back up. So, um, so I like my little blue floral heart die with the, with the lock that we called a lock keyhole with the keyhole. And so now I'm just counting those scallops to try to figure out where the center is. Um, and so there we go. We've got the center panel handled and the left panel is done. So now all we have to do is the right hand panel and we'll be done with this project. So for Christmas um, I got a die cut and I did a sample cut of it in black just because I had a lot of black paper and um, it has three little, it's one big pocket but with three little slots and then it has paper that you can cover up the pocket with. So um, I decided that um, I was I was hoping that that would fit and when I did my prototype I looked at it and it fits on that right hand panel just perfectly. So I considered going with this darker blue but it seemed very busy and a whole lot and then had that piece been big enough I would have totally used that piece but it wasn't quite big enough um, but I can use that for uh, the to decorate with. So. Um, so yeah, so I decided to go with that little heart piece. And so once again, here we're going to go in the Sizzix machine. I'm sure that people are laughing at me because it's not like these are a new machine. They've been out forever, but it's new to me. I've never had one before. And um, it's awesome. I mean, it's just awesome. And so um, I found a bunch of dies on Amazon. I searched for planner dies if you, if you are interested. Um, and they have some that already have the holes in them. Um, so if you looked at my uh, planner flip through, the heart that I had that already had holes in it, I got from Amazon. So um, this already has the score places where the pocket folds over and scores, and it makes this cute little pocket right there. How easy is that? Like that's so much easier than the pockets I made by hand. And so um, I'm just going to use score tape once again to tape the back of it and get that pocket down and yeah that's this is like easy peasy right here okay now that I've got this pocket down the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how to put the glitter dots up 
on the top right hand corner and so what I'm going to do is I found a good spot to trim my glitter dots because I don't have enough room for a whole sheet so I have enough room for about a half sheet and so I've taken a pocket card and I am going to trim the pocket card so that it's the same size as my um, glitter dot sheet that I have so um, and I'm going to use I have another package of glitter dots so I'm just using the packaging that the glitter dots came in because um, they obviously are the right size that packaging so I don't even have to think about that so I still had one of the glitter dots in their packaging so I'm just going to trim off that pocket card right here and take that out and so I'm just going to use that as the backer for the um, glitter dots it just gives a little added uh, visual interest of them sitting in their little clear glass uh, clear pocket that's just the packaging and oh look here are my options for ribbons I have been looking at storage options for ribbons because I had them in a tub and they're overflowing so I think I'm gonna get some rain gutters and attach them to the wall in my crafty room to put ribbons on so um, I'm not sure why I pulled out all those reds, maybe just to get them out of the way. So now I'm just looking at what ribbons I have and what ribbons I think would look best with them. Um, I know which one I think looks best from here. Um, I don't remember which one I chose. Oh, I think I chose one of the velvets. Yeah, that velvet. And so um, I have a lot of ribbon samples from a job that I used to have. And so um, this is just a, we had a sample of every color of velvet ribbon that was made and so uh, we would just use it when we were making stationery that had ribbons on it um, just to try it out as a sample and see which one would match before we bought bunches and bunches of it and so I have a bunch of ribbon samples like this and when you're doing crafting like this you don't use very much ribbon so like a little bit like that is a perfect amount because like right here, I'm going to use about six inches, maybe, probably not even that much. So I'm just folding it over and I'm going to cut a little notch out of it. And because this is velvet, it is velvet on one side and not velvet on the other. Um, and so if you have double face satin or double uh, grosgrain, it's the same on both sides, so you don't have to do that. But if you have velvet like this, you have to do a little weird twist in the, um, in the, ribbon to get it to um, be velvet on the front both of them and so I am just going to staple that I saw that little trick from Allie Edwards um, and I think that is a most excellent trick is just staple a ribbon on because it's kind of cute and yeah so I'm just marking a, a, the spot where I want to trim off my uh, packaging bag so that I'll use that for um, slipping the glitter dots down inside of, but then you'll still get to see them. So um, they're functional because you get to use the glitter dots, and also they're pretty because they're glitter dots. And I don't think anything's prettier than Coco Daisy's glitter dots. They're just really pretty. So that is some vellum. I kind of got it close to the screen a minute ago. It is a vellum tape runner. And as you see, once you use it, you cannot see it, um, even with that clear bag. So my, um, I was having a little bit of trouble getting that to fit in that bag. So I'm just going to trim off the edges. And um, I think my trimmer didn't cut all the way through. And so I had to... to cut it with a pair of scissors just to get it to fit. So let's see if it fits. There we go. So isn't that cute in its little clear bag? It looks like it's just attached, but it's sitting in a clear bag. So, um, so yeah, so that's really cute. Okay, so I'm gonna use the art on this pocket card to fit in that little slot because A, it's really cute, and B, it's really narrow horizontally, and that's what I need for that little section right there. So I've measured um, what size I need it to be and now I'm just going to trim um, and I just started by trimming I know I'm gonna have to trim a lot off and so um, I just got it so that it's the right size and I'm kind of looking at the um, 
at the ruler on the trimmer so that I can get it to be the exact size that I need it to be. And so there we go. We have our little heart. It's going to go next to the glitter dots. And so that's a super simple. All I got to do is tape it down. And you know, I know that I use too much tape, but like watching myself on video, good gosh, did you see how much tape I put on that? I, it was a ton. That heart's not going anywhere. Okay, so and now it's just a matter of decorating these pockets down on the bottom right corner. And so I have all my die cuts. I sort mine by um, pictures tabs and labels and words. Those are my three little um, buckets of die cuts every month. And so that's just it for in my head, that's the functional way to sort them. You can sort them however you want to. So um, there are sheets of paper that go in the uh, middle pocket. And I have, <laughs> I have a, a cute love uh, paper clip, but it took me a really long time to get it um, disentangled from that binder clip and so I'm just looking at the other two rose gold clips that I have and um, I'm just going to use that little book one with a heart on it and so I'm just going to clip my um, stickers together because it just makes it easier to pull them out of the pocket if you have them all stuck together so now I'm going to start looking at um, decorating the entire folder. So um, I'm just going to use my die cuts, put them here and there, um, and decide how I want this to decorate. Because it looks cute, but it needs a little decor here and there. So here we go. Okay, so the next thing is I'm looking at the stickers that are going to go in that pocket and then what I'm going to put in the center slot of that pocket. And so I look at my pocket cards, too much the same color, too dark, and um, I ultimately decide that I am going to go back and pull that exact same blue floral paper that I had used before. And so at this point, I'm going to clean up all my die cuts and I am going to get down to business. So I'm going to start um, peeling off the backs of the Coco Daisy um, die cuts because I love that Coco Daisy puts adhesive on the back of their die cuts. And once I get all the die cuts put down, then I'm going to look at what I'm going to do with that pocket. So I went ahead and I die cut one of the pocket covers that came with the die that made the pocket and I didn't really love that so now I'm just measuring and I'm trimming a piece of, of uh, paper and I'm gonna stick it in that pocket and so I just go ahead and punch it so that it'll match all the other punched uh, papers in this project and stick it in that top pocket and just there we go and I realized that um, I didn't Put a little ribbon on my tag on the left hand side so I just go back and use the same velvet ribbon to create a tag and then just put the tag back in the pocket and put my stickers in their pockets and there is my sticker folder. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions please let me know. If you don't already subscribe to my video please click the like and subscribe button now and the notifications bell to be notified when I make new videos. Thanks so much and have a great day.